number one Iron Age booty daddy. The creative bankruptcy of Hollywood and storytelling is about to go after possibly my favorite animated film series of all time. Depending on the day, this film series will go back and forth between it and Treasure Planet. Now, How to Train Your Dragon literally made me rethink how animated films can be done. Obviously, by the time that Treasure Planet was coming out, I was pretty much out of high school. I didn't even see it when I was in high school. I didn't see it until I ha almost had a kid of my own. And it changed how I thought of animated films. And my God, I thought, wow, if this is the direction we're going to go, man, we're going to be in for some good stories. <laughs> Boy, howdy, was I wrong on that one. But ladies and gentlemen, some of the saddest news that I can literally say is to hear this. Let's go over to Variety. All right, so... From Variety, How to Train Your Dragon, a live action adaptation coming to theaters in 2025. And as we have seen, live action adaptations of animated or animation has absolutely eviscerated movies. Why? Uh, probably because the right people aren't at the helm. A live action adaptation of How to Train Your Dragon is soaring to theaters in 2025. Well, thank God they didn't rehash the headline there. Uh, Dean DeBlois, who wrote and directed the animated trilogy in 2010's How to Train Your Dragon, and 2014's How to Train Your Dragon 2, and 2019's How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World, is returning to write and direct the newest entry in the franchise. It's slated to release on March 14, 2025. The Oscar nominated. How to Train Your Dragon takes place in the mythical Viking village of Burke and follows the adventure of misfit teen named Hiccup who befriends an injured dragon he calls Toothless. The fantasy series backed by Universal and DreamWorks and based on the book series by uh, Chris, uh, Cressida Cowell, I hope I said that name right, I apologize if I did not, has generated more than $1.6 billion worldwide. Their journey has taken them beyond the big screen, spawning three TV series, DreamWorks Dragons, Rescue Riders, and The Nine Realms. I actually been watching The Nine Realms with my kids and it's somewhat enjoyable as well as theme park rides and a live show, How to Train Your Dragon on Ice. Prior to his work in the original How to Train Your Dragon trilogy, Du Bois worked on Chris Sanders on Disney's Lilo and Stitch after first serving as co-heads of stories in 1998's Mulan. In addition to writing and directing, Du Bois has also served as a producer. The only thing that I have been excited for that's a reboot, remake, rehash lately has been the King of the Hill series. Because it's something that I remember from when I was a kid. I don't have that kind of nostalgia for how, you're how to train your dragon. And although the original writer may be coming back, ladies and gentlemen, doing a live action adaptation is completely and utterly almost impossible. I think one of the only ones to have done it mildly okay that was somewhat enjoyable to watch that I've ever seen was the Detective Pikachu movie. And Detective Pikachu had its fair amount of issues, but overall that one wasn't bad. Every other live action adaptation that has come out has just eviscerated its source. Look at what they did with Dragon Ball with the live. It pissed off Toriyama so bad. He had to come back and then create a Dragon Ball Super because of how they eviscerated his world. You think of many other various, I mean, I mean, what, Death Note? You think Death Note did a good job? How about the Convoy Bebop series? How about any of these? Now, don't get me wrong. I could be 100% wrong here. I could be wrong, and in two years, everybody could come back and say, a drink with crazy. You didn't know what you were talking about. This movie is as good, if not better, than the animated series, than the animated original movies. But the law of diminishing returns always seems to have an effect here. 
especially with a heavy reliance. Now, this is one of the issues that I have. They call it a live action adaptation. And ladies and gentlemen, do we really have live action adaptations? No, we don't. We have CGI, which is another term for modern day animation. So we are going to get a modern day animation of the How to Train Your Dragon series, which was modernly animated during its time. The CGI is going to be overplayed to the nines. We're going to have, hopefully we have decent dialogue and good Lord, I hope that they actually cast actors that are halfway competent. Of course, then again, from what we're finding out is most actors are actually fairly competent. Uh, they just have crap writing behind them. As long as we can stay on track, we can keep the CGI under wraps and this and for some reason the story narrative around this follows the original to a point where we see the highs and the lows and as long as they don't decide to do the obvious thing of equity and inclusion here specifically inclusion to change the race and sexual identities of some of the characters because we are in fact talking about the middle ages well but beyond the middle ages of the Norse culture if we can keep most of this stuff out, maybe, just maybe, just maybe, this movie will not desecrate the animated series. I had to buy this. I had to buy this DVD four times. Because when my daughter was little, she had a bad habit of going in, opening up the DVD case, and then she'd lick her hands, and then she'd go, and she'd lick the DVDs and throw it over her shoulder. Four times and then an animal ate my how to drink your dragon a second time and then i finally got it a third time and then i don't know what happened in that one. Oh wait no that one got shoved into one of our old uh playstations with about five other discs and destroyed i bought this movie four times because of it getting destroyed i hope they don't destroy it this time because ruining the disc is one thing but if they do to how to train your dragon like what they did to star wars i may never watch the movies again i think that if they do this movie wrong it will break my heart because i love these movies the hero's journey in them is fantastic the romance in them is fantastic. The adventure and the journey that you are taken on is fantastic. And as a young man who was a father trying to come into my own, trying to figure out how to be a dad, believe it or not, even though the original movie, Hiccup was a little younger than I was, and I think in all the movies he was, I still felt like I went on a journey. And I still felt like as that, as he became the chief of his tribe in the last movie, I was becoming the chief of my own tribe. And I think that's my family. I became the head of a household. And I, I really can only hope that they don't do to this what they did to Star Wars. Because this one might actually break my heart if they do it. I'm not attached to a lot of things. I'm not attached to a lot of media, but I will say this. They did something right to get an arrogant prick like me to want to watch these movies and be attached to it. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think down below in the comments. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Are you excited for a live action adaptation? Do you not want a live action adaptation? Do you think that we should finally leave the reboot and the rehash and with the re, 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 the re behind? Let me know down in the comments below and never forget that I dedicate a special live stream to you on Sundays, every Sunday at 11 a.m. Central. I go through, I read all of your comments, I engage with the live chat. So if you guys say, Royce, you're wrong, <clears throat> or Royce, you're right, or Royce, eh, you're missing this, though. Well, what about this? I read your comments and I respond to you because I feel that the best way to give back to you guys for dedicating time to me is to dedicate time to you. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here on A Drink With Crazy. And until next time, 
Cheers, everybody. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. Never forget, if you would like to be a part of my supporter live streams, head over to my Gilded or my Locals. Links down in the description, and you guys can join me for those live streams every single Wednesday. But right now, I would love to say thank you to everybody who is supporting me. Over on Locals, we've got Little Andean, Sword Rush, Frequency Studios, Katie Francis, Kikomon, Iron Age Media. We also have... Over on the Gilded, JP, the Myriosphere Origin, Skunk's Workshop, and the Gold Tier, he is an Iron Age booty daddy. Trippy Soul, also another Iron Age booty daddy, Kiko Mon, and Frequency Studios to round all of it up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here on the channel, and I will see you all in the supporter live streams.